My name's Ian from Ian Taylor Trekking. Uh, I've been to the top of Everest. I've led 17 treks to Everest Base Camp and climbed numerous peaks around the world, including Kilimanjaro 19 times. Um, we have a range of trips to the Himalayas. We usually run about 10 to 15 Everest Base Camp trips. Some of them are sleeping in Everest Base Camp trips every year, pre-monsoon, April, May, and in September, October. Um, this is the gear that I've kind of been using going to Everest Base Camp for over a decade now. So I'm going to show you everything that I will bring to base camp. Um, I just came back from there and I'm going again in September. So this is what works. It depends on if you go in March, it's going to be colder. Murphy dog, you need to get out of here. Um, if you go in a March, April trip into a May trip, you're going to have different temperatures. If you go on a September trip, October, November, it's going to be colder in November. So there's no one size fits all, so you need to get in touch with us, make sure that you have the right kit, the right gloves, the right boots, everything specifically to what you need. Um, my hands don't necessarily get that cold. My wife Laura's hands do get cold on trips. So, you know, there's no one size fits all. And it's important to speak to us um, before you, you pick what time you're going. Uh, and then we can adjust the gear accordingly. But this is what I'll bring. I have sleeping bag rated to minus 10 Celsius. Um, it's good enough in all the lodges all the way up. We're staying in lodges, two people in a room. Uh, they're basic but comfortable. Um, minus 10 sleeping bag is fine. Normally what I'll do, so I'll put this in. Normally what I'll do is I'll also have an Nalgene, not only for drinking, but in the evenings I can fill this up with boiling water, put it into my sleeping bag, and it's gonna keep me warm uh, the whole time that I'm there. So we'll talk more about that later, but that's um, important. So the sleeping bag, possibly with a liner, I've never used them. A lot of the lodges we use have blankets and extra blankets and extra pillows if you need them. So you don't need um, anything more than that. So minus 10 sleeping bag works. Um, in terms of gear, in terms of your foot, starting at the bottom, I use, I've been using these Scarpa uh, Kinesis boots. Um, anything that has really good ankle support um, a more rigid sole on the boot, so something that is harder to bend is going to give you more uh, security. I've seen people walking around in trainers, um, I've seen people snap ankles um, on the trail, so it's not a good idea. You need strong, solid boots, you need them to be worn in, and that's absolutely essential for any ever space country. So I'll put them in. And when I'm finished walking and hiking, I'm going to use, I'm going to take off my hiking boots. And I'm going to kind of transfer into a trail runner. You can have any sort of runner that you're comfortable in. These are just Solomon trek, uh, trail runners. I use these every day when I switch out of my boots. So I'll put them in. Um, on the trail, you know, the weather can be consistent or it can be horrendous. It can be cold, it can be warm, it can be anything. But one thing you do want to have in your day, day pack every day is rain gear. So what I have is, these are Gore-Tex, you can have a poncho, um, this is a Mirror Peak, Berghaus jacket, um, really good rain gear, Gore-Tex, waterproof, really good, and I have the same for my leggings. Gore-Tex shell, and that's going to keep me dry, it's not going to rain all day every day, but it's important to have good rain gear. So we'll add that in. Um, so when it comes to um, what's going to be, I'm going to wear on, on the top part of me, I, you know, you're doing a 14, 13, 14 day trip, depending on, on your itinerary in terms of walking. Um, and you can add on two or three days extra for traveling. So you're up in the mountains. Yes, the lodges that we use, some of them have showers in your room. And pretty much all of them have showers, uh, bar the last couple of days of the base camp. But, you know, you can use baby wipes, obviously, but showers are available. But also having using merino wool. Um, people, if you're going to wear something like this, a cotton t-shirt, um, it's not going to work. It's going to get sweaty, nasty. If you get cold um, because it gets damp, it's not going to work. And you're going to be cold within the first day. And then you can pick up a cold and then you get sick. And it's not a good idea. Merino wool is a really good idea. These are icebreaker tops. Uh, Smart wool have good tops. Patagonia have um, merino wool tops. Um, this is like a mid-layer one. So you could roll up the sleeves on this 
um, and wear it. Uh, you could have a short sleeve t-shirt, merino wool, very light so when it gets when, when it gets damp from trekking because it can be 60, 70 degrees Celsius in May, or sorry, 60 degrees Fahrenheit or 15 to 20 degrees uh, Celsius in your hiking, you know, these get damp and they dry quickly, they're antimicrobial, they don't smell. So you, I will have like two of these t-shirts. Another one, this is another icebreaker top. Um, I'll have two of these short sleeve t-shirts. I'll have a longer sleeve and I'll have, sometimes I have this one with a hood on it. It's an icebreaker. It's, um, let me see, it's 200 um, merino. Some of them are 160, 200, and 260 is the thicker one. So I'll have another long sleeve of this. And then I'll have another one for higher up if I need it. This is a 260 icebreaker merino wool. And I can sleep in it. I can walk up to Kalapatar in it. I can use it during the day if I have to. And then I've got a range of tops. So I have two short sleeve, three long sleeve and merinos. When you're, you know, your core and your upper body is so important. So I also have a fleece um, for the trip. It's got a hood on it, always handy. Uh, this is a Patagonia or one top. I can have, or three, sorry. I got the right one, Patagonia or three. So I can do the short sleeve, I can do the long sleeve, I can do the fleece layer and I'll have one fleece. I can also do like a gillet down. So I can have a short sleeve t-shirt, I can have this over it. I can take it off. The down is super light, so when you're putting anything in your backpack, carrying big, help, you know, heavier fleeces, that could be used, you know, in your day pack or having it in the duffel bag, um, mixed with this, or the heavier down, a 700 fill down jacket, which I'll show in a minute. Um, but all these different layers, so the long sleeve mixed with this, mixed with the, the fleece, mixed with the heavier down, you've got flexibility to, you know, you're not wearing the same clothes all the time, but you can mix and match if the temperatures change, you know, higher up the wind can pick up above 4,000 meters or uh, 14,000 feet, um, heading up towards base camp, it can be snowing, can be raining, so you need to be able to adjust and not be too hot, but at least having layers that uh, wick away all the sweat, they don't smell, and uh, merino is the best for that. So that's what I will wear. Uh, so I'll put all these t-shirts in, in my bag. Then I'll put the fleece in. Um, and I'll either have the fleece or the down jacket in my day pack during the day. And these kind of crumple up into very little, super light. And you're not carrying too much in your backpack. So I'll put that in. Um, in terms of what I'll wear on my lower body, I'll have uh, light trekking shorts that I'll have with me, one pair. Um, in terms of trekking pants, I'll have just a pair of trekking pants. Some people like to have a zip off so you can wear them as shorts and then when you need them higher up you can wear them as a full length pant. Possibly having one of these trekking pants alongside shorts and a trekking pant so you got two so you don't need a pair of shorts you can mix and match um, and at least you've got two pairs on the trail i'll put that in then i've got uh, a thermal base layer merino wool icebreaker um, like a 160 is fine but if you're going on to do a climb or you're doing something else possibly going with a 200 or a thicker layer we can talk about that make sure you're getting the right stuff and then when we get into camp, I take off my trekking pants and my shorts. I'm switching into fleece pants. Um, and the fleece pants, they can be tracksuit bottoms. They can be anything once it's comfortable. And, um, you know, I just like these Sherpa brand pants. They're nice and comfortable sitting around the lodge in the evening. And it's my transfer over gear once I've changed in the lodge. So I'll put them in. Um, in terms of the socks that I'll have, I'll have a range of different socks. These are smart wool. I'll have one liner sock um, compared to these thicker trekking socks. I'll probably have four or five of those trekking socks. And then I'll have one thicker one for higher up and a liner sock uh, for higher up when we're going up Calabatar or just if I want to around the lodges if it's getting cool in the evenings. So I'll have all that. Then I have um, 
probably a, this is probably one of the most important things. Now, on the base camp trail, it's hard. Sometimes it's warm in May. It's warmer on the trail, and having a fleece line buff um, can be quite annoying because it's just getting too hot on your around your neck. But definitely having a buff. There's dust on the trail. There's yak poop being, yeah, you know, hurled up in the wind. But having this, you know, around your neck, you can put it up over your mouth, uh, keeping your you know, keeps moisture in your mouth, uh, keeps you from getting coughs and colds and picking up other people's um, issues that can happen. So definitely having a buff, super important. Um, in terms of gloves higher up, you know, during the day, sometimes when you move above Dingbo Shea, 4,400 meters going up to Labouche um, and higher up, you might have to wear liner gloves. So I'll have Always, I'll have these and a good guide will tell you when to have them in your day pack. Um, having liner gloves mixed with a heavier glove uh, for higher up on Calipatar, possibly in base camp if you need it depending on the time of year. Uh, one that you can take it off, take a picture and put your glove back in as quickly as possible. So having a liner glove, having the thicker gloves are kind of important. Um, this one has a hole in it. <laughs> but having having liner gloves really important and these thicker gloves we can show you the right gloves it's better to talk about it because as I said some people's hands are colder than others and um, having the right gloves are kind of important your feet and your head and your hands are the ones that get cold when there's a lack of oxygen um, your body kind of steals the heat away from your extremities uh, to keep your core and the rest of your body functioning correctly so making sure you've got um, good gloves is kind of important along with even possible hand warmers. So we'll put those in. Um, bag is filling up. Um, while I have it out here, I use this type of a trekking pole, double adjusted, or this is a single adjusted. You can have a double adjusted, single adjusted. Uh, we'll show you how to use it, but getting out of using them, um, always good, and it's always good for coming downhill, taking the weight off your knees. Some people like one, some people like two. It's good to try them out beforehand. Um, and we can talk more about that with people. But I'll pack that up, make sure it goes in the bag. Um, in terms of the sun and the cold higher up, I'll always have some sort of a sun hat that I can put on. Keeps the sun off my neck, keeps it off my face, my ears. I don't want to be getting burnt in any sort of way. You know, you're dehydrating four times faster. You're losing fluid um, all the time. You're trying to be drinking four to five liters of water. You don't need any other ailments, um, whether that's um, sunburn or anything like that. You don't want to be dealing with that because it'll drain your body. You'll get fatigued and at altitude, that's not a good thing. So having a good sun hat is important. Also having a warmer hat uh, that you can put the buff up behind. You can cover your face. Having a warm hat that um, you use around the lodge. Uh, when you're heading up Calipatar, going into base camp and higher up on the trail, definitely having a warmer hat is a must. So we'll just slot those in. When it comes to additional gear, I'll have also probably four or five pairs of merino underwear um, that I'll have with me. You know, they'll last longer, they're quick drying, um, always worth having on the trail. Or you need them on the trail, but four or five is fine. Um, in terms of kind of looking after yourself and your personal hygiene, um, you need to have, I suppose, your own personal medical kit. I'll have a, we'll have numerous kits with us, um, and I'll have a, my own personal one with uh, bandages, blister pads, uh, some medication, aspirin, disprin, ibuprofen. Um, like an adventure medical kit is 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 good, but we. We send out a 45 page dossier which kind of lists what we require for you to bring but we can talk through more about that if needed. Also having um, rehydration salts, emergency, um, water purification tablets, um, what else do you need? Medication if you're looking to go on Diamox which we can talk to you personally about or having uh, antibiotics for chest infections, things like that are common. Um, it's important to have those, so we'll put that here. Possibly having spare shoelaces um, for your boots if needed. Head torch with spare batteries, it's used quite a bit. 
navigating around lodges. I said the water purification. Having a lot of baby wipes when you get into the lodge each evening. You're taking off your clothes, you're cleaning yourself. Um, so you need baby wipes before you put on all the other, the fresh clothes that you're going to wear. Um, some sort of a quick drying towel is always good. Uh, if there's, there is showers in, a, in some of the lodges we use, we stay three nights in Lampshire Bazaar on the way up at three and a half thousand meters or eleven and a half thousand feet. So there's usually in the rooms that we get, there's showers in the room so you can shower um, and there's showers in all the other lodges. So it's good to have brushing your teeth, cleaning up, have a spare towel. Um, toiletries. Um, for me, I'll just have a small little bag. It'll have deodorant, um, moisturizer, uh, sun cream, 30 to 50 SPF. Uh, definitely a higher, the higher the better. Um, in terms of protecting yourself from the sun, I'll have a toothbrush. Not that much, not, not that many items. Lip balm, probably two of these. Um, I'll have some Baraka multivitamins. I'll have an, another multivit um, that you would want to take. You want to keep your immune system high. So you definitely want to be taking vitamins, vitamins, um, emergencies, just keeping yourself strong, healthy, because uh, you're introducing yourself to low oxygen environment, new food, other people. Um, so you definitely, I will be taking these on a daily basis. And I'll have them in here. And that's that. In terms of sunglasses, I'll have two pairs, but I'll have, these are category fours. Uh, wrap around is good, uh, just to protect yourself from the sun. There's a less UV protection, but any sort of, these are Jublo Nomads, but I'm not sure they're actually on sale anymore. But any sort of wrap around glass, uh, sunglass like these are category four. Category three is fine too. Polarized lenses uh, are good. So we'll add those in and I'll probably have another, I'll have a spare pair or something similar to these um, on the trail just in case. And then I'll also have hand sanitizer. You can buy it on the trail, you can buy water purification on the trail, you can buy all sorts of stuff on the trail but I don't recommend a lot of it. You can buy stuff in Kathmandu, we help people gather uh, stuff. You can buy this in Kathmandu. Um, but make sure it's anything you buy there is going to be good quality. Um, I'll make sure I have two of these, maybe three, and people are always passing uh, them around. So uh, trying to keep your hands clean all the time is really important. So in terms of going up the trail, I use this is the system I usually have. I'll have like two liters of water in the Camelback. Um, you can have a three liter Camelback. What I'll do is when I fill this up with boiling water or regular water and treat it with water, water purification tablets. I drink, try and drink one of these with some vitamins in it in the morning before I even leave the, the bedroom. Uh, I'll want to have a litre of water in me. I'll bring these down to breakfast. I'll get two more in here and another one in here. And on some of the days lower down you can actually only carry two in the beginning and top up as there's more lodges and, and more frequency in water. But you definitely want to be drinking. I'll have one in the morning, three on the trail, that's four. And I'll try and drink another one uh, when I get into into the lodge. And I'm trying to, you know, I want to have my drinking done as early as possible, so I'm not getting up going to the toilet all night. Um, and then I've got another water when I go to sleep. It's in my if it's cold, I'll have it boiling water in my sleeping bag. If not, I'll just have it in the room and I'm ready to drink it straight away. So I definitely want to be drinking four to five liters of water. Some people have recommended having something to carry this in to keep it warm if you're going up to the summit night or summit night in Calabatar because you're leaving in the morning when it could be potentially uh, definitely below freezing. Uh, so that's something that could be added in. Um, and I'll add all these in to my bag. I have weighed my bag and it's about 11 kilos. So obviously down is going to be lighter. I have my bigger down jacket that I'm going to be wearing. <coughs> In here, I'll have this in my day pack, which is here. Um, this is a this is a bigger one. It's a 45 liter. Anything anything from uh, really 30, I would recommend 35 liter bags. Um, you know, this is possibly overkill. The most important thing is having a really good waist strap. When you tie your bag on, your shoulders this should be loose, 
and this waist strap should be tight. So definitely 35 to 45 liter rucksack. Make sure it sits well, try it out. You need to adjust the straps. We can we talk about that on the trail, but it's really important. This backpack, um, you know, it has to be right because you're gonna, you're, like your boots have to be right, your backpack has to be correct. The gear that you have has to be correct. In here, I'll have my down jacket, my rain gear, my camera, my personal um, medication, um, medical kit, uh, sun cream and camera. And that's all I'll have in here. Really, it shouldn't be any more than five to six kilos, which is 11, 13 pounds. Um, but more importantly is when you're training at home, you should be trying to aim to be building up to carrying double that in your training. Um, when you're going to be carrying five, six kilos or 12 pounds on a trail uh, for 13 days in a row, you need to make sure that um, your body is able to handle it. Uh, if you want more information about our trips, our treks, uh, training, um, just get in touch with us. Uh, you can email me directly. It's ian at iantaylortrekking.com. Go straight on our website, iantaylortrekking.com. Pick up the phone, give us a call, drop us a mail, and uh, we'd love to talk to you.